Hello Bugsy, my name is Kate and this is my channel Chapter Gate. Today I'm going to be talking about five shelf whales that I want to read. What is a shelf whale, you may ask? Well, or whale. A shelf whale is a large tome that takes up a bunch of space on the shelves. Shelf whale. This term was coined by my husband and it's perfect. This is going to be a three-part series for now, but who knows, it may have more parts, I don't know. <laughs> these are all fictional shelf whales. I may do a non-fiction edition at some point, but these are my fictional shelf whales that I want to read. I'm going to talk about five different ones and what I know about them, which could be very limited. I'm going to like start with like the smallest and try to work my way up. The first is Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. This is from the Malazan Book of the Fallen series. I, okay, so this book doesn't look that big. It's got like 600, over 600 pages. It doesn't look very big. It's kind of small physically, but in the series they get chunkier and chunkier. One of them's like 1200 something pages. Um, so it's also just a big series and they're just real big. But I do want to read them because um, my husband's read them and he won't stop bugging me about them and I would like him to stop. And also it sounds very interesting. It sounds like a very expansive universe and world and stuff. I have absolutely no idea what it's about. I think that there are like beings that kind of hold gods like within them and stuff like that, but I don't really know. Number two is a very popular book and it is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. And this book is supposed to be kind of like Avatar The Last Airbender meets West African mythology. And I'm pretty dang excited about it because most of the mythology that I read is either Norse or Celtic mythology. Um, so I would really like to like read some more um, mythology based in other places. So um, West Africa is a place to start. I know that's kind of a large area but I'm excited about it. I've heard mixed reviews but hopefully I will enjoy it and I probably will. I enjoy a lot of things. I hear it's kind of like an adventure book. The main character of this book is named Zaley and it looks like magic was sort of eradicated in this land and there's like a prince that's trying to wipe out magic. So she's trying to like restore it I think and she's on this quest to do so. But yeah this is another chunk that I'm gonna get to at some point. I'm not really sure how many pages this is. It's chapter 80. Oh lord. So hopefully these are smaller chapters. It's got over 500 pages. I know that much. But it's also YA, so it's probably not like quite as dense as a lot of books are that are on this list, so... Yeah. The next is The Shadow of What Was Lost, and it's by James Islington. Um, Elliot Brooks has talked a lot about this book on her channel, and I love her channel because she has really great taste in books. It matches a lot with my own. Um, but this is kind of an adventure story, so they're on like a journey the whole time, and they're going through a lot of different places, and there's a lot of different characters. But from what she said, this is actually not like that hard to read. It's pretty quick of a read. It's not like super dense um, either. Um, so I'm excited to kind of see how it goes. But we have both of the books in the duology. I'm not sure if there's going to be more, but we have both of these. So lucky me, if I really like this one, I can go straight into the next one if I want to. But I'll get to it. It'll be there. It, yep. Next is the only classic on this list, and it is Dante's Inferno, um, the Divine Comedy, Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso. Paradiso. Italian something. I got really interested in this book in like high school because I kept reading these quotes from it, and they were just gorgeous quotes, so I mainly got it for like the quotes. But it's like fiction and poetry. It's it's one of those businesses that's like written in like a poetic style. If you look at it, it's you know written in stanzas and things like that. We'll see. So this book has three sections. Um, the Inferno is supposed to be like the seven layers of hell. Purgatorio is like all about like the seven deadly sins. And then there's Paradiso, which I hope I'm saying right, and that is the home of the nine? Yes, nine celestial spheres where angels and saints and such live. So, um, yes, I'm very interested, but I don't really know completely what it's about. And I feel like it's going to take a lot of brain power to, like, grasp onto this. I mainly got it for quotes. I love the quotes that are in here, just the words. But I don't, I didn't get it to read, like, as a whole, but I want to read it as a whole. We'll see if I read it as a whole. I don't know. And then the last one on this list is Jerusalem by Alan Moore. This is so heavy. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how big, how many pages are in this. It is so heavy. Oh, my gosh. It is over 1,200. I feel like this book is going to be similar to, like, reading Ulysses, how it's just, like, a lot of random stuff thrown in here. But I'm curious, and I like to study stuff like this. 
Um, I got it because I love Alan Moore um, and his work with like Watchmen and V for Vendetta. I love how like the Easter eggs he uses and stuff and the symbolism he uses. So I thought this would be like fun to kind of like pick apart. But it's going to take a while and it's not something that I'm like really prepared to do right now because I'm doing a lot of like just chill reading at the moment and that is why it is on my book whale video so and that is all for my shelf whales that i want to read video part one look out for part two i have no idea when that's gonna happen so that's all be sure to like this and comment with some shelf whales that you have sitting around and if you would like more of this junk subscribe below bye Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming, I'm done pulling up a fight I feel